This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so let's quickly review actually what we have done till now. Yeah. Um, let's let's keep this as uh, base. Let's keep reviewing this was copy. Yeah. Okay, sir. I hope you are able to see my screens, right? Right, right, sir. Okay. So as a part of your course, what we have done till now. Okay. Uh, introduction is done, of course. Yeah. And then as a part of the organization structure, we are, we are done with the configuration of um, we are done with the configuration of organs, jobs, positions, work centers, as well as tasks. Yeah. And then uh, yes. I think we also discussed about plan version, right? Yeah. Plan version also completed, right? Plan version yes. also completed. Okay. okay. Yes. So let's say I'm done with entire org management. Sorry? I'm done with the entire org, the entire org, org, org management is done, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Completed. Now, let me quickly review. Let me log into the system and see. Yes, okay, log. No. No. Um, SPRO. Reference IMG. Reference IMG. And then we have personal management. Then global settings in personal management. Plan version. So I think we have configured the plan version. Yeah. I think we have configured the plan version. And then, yeah. And then, uh, did we also discuss about uh, the importance of transport request? Do you remember that? What exactly is the transport request and all? Did, did we discuss about the varieties of servers and clients in SAP? The development server, the quality server, and the production server. Did we discuss about that? Uh, actually, last class we discussed about the transport request, sir. Uh, servers mm -hmm. and clients. Yeah. We discussed about that. Also, regarding servers and clients. We discussed. Okay. So that means we have understood what the concept of a transport request and why the transport request is generated and what is the purpose of the transport request as well. Yeah. What is the purpose right. of the transport request as well? And then did I also discuss, you know, discuss, did I also say about the varieties of consultants in SAP? The functional guys, the techno functional guys, and all the stuff. I think I remember reading really about that. Uh, technical consultants, right? Uh, yeah, we discussed, right? So, right, all those right. guys, yeah. So, that means I'm um, actually done with the organizational management part of it. Yeah, the organization is completely done. Now, let's get into, you know, let's get into the personal administration. Yeah. Let's get into the personal administration related configurations. Now, what exactly is personal administration? So personal administration basically, you know, we talk about the administrative activities related to HR. Those are the things that are executed in personal administration activity or function in human resources. Yeah. So what are the administrative related activities in HR? The administrative related activities can be like your hiring an employee. Yeah, hiring an employee. Now, as a part of recruitment, you know, the recruitment process ends once we roll out the offer to the prospective employee. Yeah, once we roll out the offer, the recruitment process ends. And Keeping the offer on hand, the, 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 the candidate will come to join the company. Okay. And when the candidate comes to join the company or when the prospective employee comes to join the company, the hiring process begins. Yeah. The hiring process right. begins. So with the hiring process, the personal administration, 
the personal administration related activities will start yeah with the hiring okay. of an employee with the hiring of an employee so what happens when the hiring process is going on so the, the employee is given few documents or few forms to fill in right few forms okay. to fill in when you go to a company new company to join you know they give you initially some forms to fill in you are going to give your first name middle name last name personal credentials previous right. employment credentials education credentials your family yes. details and all the stuff yeah or you are given a bunch of forms and it's really right mayor and you know it's it's kind of tough task to fill all those forms by giving repetitive information in different forms yeah so right so after we fill in the forms you know uh, the executives will you know feed this entire information into their software system it might be an sap system or non sap system or whatever it is yeah so they execute right. the hiring action they they initiate the hiring process in their software system which we are using so this is the this is going to be the first step in the personal administration department related activities yeah so by hiring an employee by way of hiring an employee the employee's master data yeah master data is collected yeah master data is collected so uh, so this master data will be like your you know personal details and you know, then previous employment details education details family members details and all so this entire master data is collected and captured in the software system so this is going to be the first step then apart from by way of collecting their master data we also capture the information pertaining to the shift in which the employee is expected to work is it the general shift or is it you know an in a rotating shift that means if an employee is working in hr or finance department yeah it is going to be general shift yeah if an employee is working in the production division or production department yeah then um, it's going to be like rotating shift there is a possibility that the shift might be a rotating shift if at all the production you know division is expected to work 24 by 7 yeah is expected to function 24 by 7 then the employees are also expected to work in different shifts yeah different shifts. Right. Then, if an employee is working in a sales department or sales division then if at all they are also into international sales yeah by chance then obviously the sales guys also are expected to work in different shifts so by way right. of hiring an employee by way of capturing the employee master data we will also going to capture the shifts yeah in which the employee is expected to work that is also okay. nothing but the work schedule that is also called as work schedule. Okay. then what are the payment details salary details also have to be captured yeah salary details also yeah. have to be captured what is the basic pay of the employee what are the allowances that are going to be paid to the employee from time to time yeah and then what are the deductions regular deductions you know that are to be made from employee's salary even the salary related information also has to be captured while hiring an employee right while hiring an employee then the employment related details employment related details employment related details in the sense whether the employee is a permanent employee or a contractor yeah or a contractor or a trainee or a trainee whether the employee's salary has to be paid on a weekly basis or on a bi-weekly basis or semi-monthly basis or on a monthly basis even that information has to be captured while hiring an employee okay while hiring an employee even that information has to be captured after this what is what are the benefits into which the employee got involved what are all the benefit benefits or benefit plans into which the employee has to be enrolled even this, this information has to be captured while hiring an employee so by, by by way of capture you know by way of hiring an employee the hr related you know the, the personal administration related you know guys or users they are going to capture a whole lot of information about an employee 
about an employee because based on all this information only the time evaluation will be performed and the payroll run will be executed for the employees based on all this information that will be captured right so this is the first and foremost activity in personal administration department then so once the employee starts working there are different activities again like for instance you know the employee starts for yeah or there is a change of position yeah change of position or let's say change of pay yeah pay change yeah or there is different there, there is master data related changes yeah master okay. data changes like change of address change of family members information let's say an employee got, you know gets married so the family member new family member information has to be you know captured into the system then there is a change birth in the family or there is a death of a family member you know or there is an adoption or you know varieties of things varieties of things okay all this information has to be captured the new information has to be fed in the old the old information has to be you know um, delimited or the old information has to be uh, uh, what do you call a end date has to be given to the old information all this master data related maintenance activities also will be taken care by the personal administration department yeah okay. personal administration okay. department and then we also have the termination you know actions or the termination procedures that have to be executed so all these things are taken care by the personal administration related department yeah personal administration so what is sixth one termination right Termin termination of the employees okay termination or you know whenever the employees want to leave the company you know the employees have to be terminated you know, from the services so, oh, okay. so that is also a part of the personal administration department personal administration department. department so in sap hr of course we have a separate sub module called as personal administration and in this personal administration sub module we do all the configurations pertaining to personal administration related activities yeah we do all the configurations related to the personal administration related activities and the first and foremost concept in personal administration is creation of enterprise structure and personal structure yeah creation of enterprise structure and personal structure so what is this enterprise structure yeah enterprise structure okay. the administrative structure of the company the administrative structure of the company is depicted in the SAP system using enterprise structure, the administrative structure. Now, what is this administrative structure? We have already defined organizational structure, right? So, right. organizational structure it is a physical structure of the company. Yeah, we're using the organizational structure. We depict the physical structure of the company, whereas Physical, there is a different structure called as administrative structure also. Yeah, there's a different structure called administrative structure using which the company is going to employ or the company is going to deploy the policies and procedures and all this stuff. Yeah, so this is different than the physical structure. Now, what is the importance of this administrative structure? Now, as per the example, what we are seeing, yeah, we have the operations in two different locations, Atlanta, yeah, and then Dallas, yeah, Dallas. Okay, now let us consider holiday calendar, yeah, holiday calendar. Now, there might be certain holidays which are pretty much local to Atlanta, yeah, and there might be certain holidays which are pretty much local to Dallas. So the holidays that are given to the employees working in Atlanta, the same holidays cannot be given to the, you know, uh, employees working in Dallas. 
Balas. For example, if you consider you know Indian scenario itself, India is you know it's a vastly diverse country, huge country and all. So let's say there are certain holidays that are given to employees working in Punjab. Yeah, Punjab. Let's say. So they have certain local holidays like Lodi and you know, all the stuff. The same holidays cannot be given to employees working in Kerala, right? Assuming that the company has operations in you know Pan India. Yeah, the right. same holidays right. cannot be offered to employees working in Kerala. In Kerala, they have certain local holidays like Onam and all this stuff. So the same holidays cannot be, and there might be so many holidays which even we haven't heard of actually, which would be known only to the guys living in Kerala. So what happens is in such a scenario, at least two holiday calendars have to be configured. Holiday calendar one and holiday calendar two, right? Holiday calendar two. So this is one difference, you know, with respect to the administration, you know, administration, administrative structure. Yeah. Then let's consider uh, benefit plans. Yeah, benefit plans. In in U, US, you know, in US specifically, uh, there are a whole lot of benefit providers and there are a whole lot of benefit plans that are offered to the employees, actually. That are offered to the employees. For, for a couple of customers with whom I have worked in the past, for one of those customers, for one of the customers, there were about more than 80 plus benefit plans that were offered to employees. Yeah, different plans, different varieties of employees. Let's say there are guys who are, you know, in the managerial cadre. For them, there were certain benefit plans which were applicable. Let's say there are executives, employees, shop floor workers. Yeah, management consultants, no different varieties of employees. So different varieties of employees have had different benefit plans that were applicable to them. Yeah. So how do we differentiate? There should be a method to differentiate, right? So we differentiate using the administrative structure, the administrative structure. Now the benefit plan costs will vary based on the state, based on the taxation in that particular state. Let's say there's a benefit plan called as MediClaim. If it costs $100 in Atlanta, the same plan for the same varieties of dependent coverage option, the plan might cost $110 in Dallas. So how do we differentiate? How do we implement all these varieties of you know, uh, procedures or varieties of policies? We implement all this using the administrative structure. Using the administrative structure. Then, we have taxation, taxes, yeah? In US specifically, in US, each and every state has a different, you know, tax rates and, you know, tax rate and all this stuff. They have the residence tax, they have the work tax, you know, and varieties of things. Let's say there's an employee working, you know, living in New Jersey, yeah, New Jersey. Um, so, and but the employee is working in New York, living in New Jersey, they are working in New York. So the residence tax, the employee has to pay that of the New Jersey, and the work tax, the employee has to pay that of the New York, that of the New York. So that way, that the, the tax related things also will be different in different locations, different locations. So like this, if you go on counting, there are varieties of things that will vary based on the location. So in order to implement all these things, we have to define a separate administrative structure. We have to define a separate administrative structure, yeah, which we depict using the enterprise structure, which we depict using enterprise structure. Now, what are the components of an enterprise structure? The component of the enterprise structure are personal areas and personal sub areas. Yeah, personal areas and personal sub areas. These are the components of enterprise structure with respect to HR. With respect to HR. Now, personal areas are the administrative divisions in the company. Yeah, personal areas 
or the administrative divisions in the company. Now, with respect to the example, what we are seeing, let me define the personal areas as Atlanta and Dallas. Personal areas also, also they consider like? Yeah, sorry, personal areas. Personal areas means? Personal areas means? Administrative, administrative divisions in the company. Administrative. administrative divisions in the company. Personal areas are administrative divisions in the company. So, as a SAP best practice, we define locations as the personal areas. We define most of the times, we define locations as the personal areas. And personal sub areas are further divisions to personal areas. Personal sub areas are further divisions to the personal areas. And with respect to the example, what we are seeing right now, the personal sub areas can be. Yeah, the personal sub areas can be finance and production and then HR and sales. This can be the personal sub areas. This can be the personal sub areas. Of course, the way it looks, you know, here it matches with the organizational structure that we have defined. But with respect to the configurations, you know, of personal admin time, payroll benefits. Configuration wise, these are different. These are different. So we have to call them as personal areas and personal sub areas moving forward. Yeah, moving forward. Now, let us go ahead and set up the enterprise structure, the SAP system. Enterprise structure. So the moment you say enterprise structure, you need to remember that it is the administrative structure in the company. That is what you need to remember. Yeah, that is what you need to remember. So if you want to create the personal areas and sub areas, SPR reference IMG. Reference IMG Enterprise Structure Enterprise Structure Definition Human Resources Management Human Resources Management We have Personal Areas personal areas double click on personal areas double click on personal areas and this is the table where we configure personal areas this is a table where we configure personal areas so if you click on table view and say print yeah print you will be able to see the table name t500p yeah, now if you want to access this table, there is also another method. Yeah, there is also another method. I think I have discussed about it maybe. There is a transaction code called SM30. Please make a note of it. There is a transaction code, code called SM30. And B underscore T 500P. Or let's say. 500 people. So, this way also you can get into this table. Yeah. Now, if you want to remember the navigation path and go through the navigation path, this is fine. This is one of the methods. But if you say that you can't remember the navigation path, yeah, I am better remembering table names, then you have to go to SM30 and give the table name. Okay, the choice is yours. Choices yours. And I always depended, I was I always like the navigation path. So I always remember using the navigation path. That is my main you know, method of understanding remembering things. Okay. So I'm bad at remembering table names to the time. And um, there are a few table names which we have to remember. And I'll tell you which are those table names. Yeah. 
specified. Now, execute the node person areas. Sorry. Double Please click on person areas. Double click on person areas and click on new entries. I want to set up a new person area. Click on new entries. Now, it's going to be For example, this um, VAI Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a four character code. Okay, that I'm giving. Okay. And this four character code can be alphanumeric. Yeah. It can be number. It can be alphabet or it can be combination of a number and alphabet. Yeah. So VAS INC yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. Here also, whenever we give names, we have to give some meaningful names which we can remember always moving forward. Yeah. Whenever we give names. Now, VAS INC Atlanta. Save it. And the other information that we can give here is that of the house number, street, PO box, postal code, city, and all this stuff. This is not mandatory though, but then the client or the customer insists we have to give it for the reports. For pulling some reports and all, they might ask us to maintain this information. Then we'll have to maintain. Otherwise, it is not mandatory. Save. Save. When you hit on save, you see another dialog box. And in this particular dialog box, there is only one mandatory field that is country key. Country key. Click on the drop down, you can see the country key of this as US. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see US here somewhere. Here we have. Okay. Now, the rest of the information is not mandatory because there is no mandatory field indication here. That is, there will be a checkbox with a tick mark. You don't have that, so you don't have to. Okay. Do it. You can continue. You see a transport request generated. Done. We are done with the setup of Atlanta. Then, Click on new entries. Click on new entries. Now VAI Dallas. Yeah. VAS INC Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. There is a second personal area that we are setting up with respect to the example. We are seeing. So like this. Of course, setting up of the enterprise structure with respect to the configuration. Is very easy. It's very easy. It's a simple chain split. That's all. It's a couple okay. of you know, three bullet entries. But then during the blueprint phase, during the blueprint phase, decide deciding how many personal areas you want. Actually, that is crucial. That is okay. crucial. Now, enterprise structure is like the foundation. Whenever you want to con construct a building, you have to, you know, define the. You have to construct the foundation first of all. Based on the whole home plan, you are going to define the foundation. Where is going right. to be your living room? Where is going to be your, you know, kitchen? You know, all the stuff. We are going to, you know, uh, define on the paper first of all. After defining on the paper, we need to get the, you know, plan, the blueprint. You know, the plan appro approved by the municipality or the local authorities, whatever it is, right? So that plan is going to be the basis for how you are going to construct your house moving forward. How your house is going to shape up depends on the plan, depends on the blueprint. So this enterprise structure is like your blueprint. Yeah, it's like the foundation. It's like the foundation. So based on how many personal areas you are defining, based on how many personal sub areas you are defining, your entire configurations in personal administration, time management, payroll and benefits will depend. Yeah. 
all your configurations okay. moving forward in the entire recipe hr will depend on your enterprise structure now now get back close personal sub areas double click on personal sub areas now under which personal area you want to configure the personal sub area you can hit on f4 or you can hit on the drop down and the system yeah. will show you all the personal areas that have been set up that have been set up so ours is like vas inc atlanta we can continue we got new entries yeah now it's going to be vas inc atlanta and finance yeah finance so it's going to be vas inc atlanta finance or just finance is also okay yeah finance then it's going to be vas inc atlanta production yeah production oh. yeah wrong save these are the two personal sub areas these are the two personal sub areas under the personal area called as atlanta then double click on the personal sub areas once again and then this time it's going to be dallas yeah it's going to be dallas so under dallas we got new entries now it's going to be VAS INC Dallas HR. HR. And then VAS INC Dallas, we have sales. Yeah. Save it. Now get back and further back. Now. With respect to the enterprise structure itself, we have another component called company code. We also have another component called as company code. Company code. And this company code is configured by FICO consultants. This company code is configured by FICO consultants. And they configure the number of company codes based on the finance business process. Yeah, they configure the number of company codes based on the finance business process. Let us say as per the finance business process, they need two company codes. Then they'll create two company codes. If they need three, they are going to create three. And we need to create the personal areas and personal sub areas under each company code. We need to configure the personal areas and sub areas under each company code. Now, where do we identify this company code? Because it is configured by FICO guys, right? So where do we identify it? So in the enterprise structure, in the definition node, we have financial accounting, financial accounting, on the financial accounting, you have edit, copy, delete, check, company code. Okay. Edit, copy, delete, check, company code. And double click on edit company code data. Double click on edit company code data. And in the training systems, we usually find a company code called as 3000. Okay. The training systems, we usually find a company code called 3000. And this is the company code that we use for our configurations. Because this is something which has to be set up by the FICO consultants, right? So, So we are going to use the company code that is already existing in the training system. Yeah. And we use 3000 company code for 3000 for our configuration. 
Now, we need to assign this company code <coughs> to the personal areas. Yeah, we need to assign the company code to the personal areas. So in the enterprise structure, the enterprise structure and assignment, we have human resources management. We have human resources management. And here you have a note called assignment of personal area to company code. Assignment of personal area to company code. Execute this note. Execute this note and identify the personal area that we have set up. So it's going to be VSI Atlanta. Uh, this is the one, right? Sorry. So, no, no. Hang, on, hang on, hang on. Did we already configure uh, personal areas and sub areas? Sir, what, sir? Did we already configure personal areas and sub areas? Uh, yes, no, I, I think we did. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Means. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, uh, sir. Then why did you tell me? No. Sir, actually, um, we just started and that's it, sir. For some yeah. periods, we've been completed. You see, we, uh, we, I think we have done all this. You see, uh, I see another structure here, you know, VSINC Atlanta, VSINC Dallas. You see? You have completed, right? Uh, you should have told me. One second, one. Sir, actually, we didn't complete it completely, like, uh, you just give entertainment structure company. And company sir, on that day means on I think on fourth or something. You just mm -hmm. you, I mean you just explain me regarding this. That's it. Mm -hmm. Edit copy delete the company. The company code is an organization unit is in account. It is used to structure the organization. I don't know when you created this. So you see BS, INC, Atlanta, and Dallas, both of them are here, and the company right, is right, also right. assigned. And right, also right. There. That means we have finished all this. Yeah. All right, that's okay. So <clears throat> let me check if we have done with the person structure also. Yeah, yeah. See, BSI firm and contract. We are done with this. Okay. Personal structure is also completed. Yeah. And then assignment. And then So can we get the date uh, on which day we have got uh, completed this? Muslim. Is there any? Hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah. That we can't see in the system. But then okay, okay. Maybe in the recording you can see that. Okay. See, we are done with this also. Personal structure is also completed. Personal structure is also completed. VSI is our example, right? Right, for VSI. Uh, we are done with the activity status, employment status, and training status. Then this is done. Yeah. And then control record. Let's see payroll areas. Payroll areas.
See, payroll is also completed. Set up of the payroll areas. Yeah. But actually, our code, I think, sir, it's VAS. Hmm? No, VSI. VSI, VSI is our code. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Do something. Do something. Review all the recordings, you know, whatever we have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. And then uh, see, maybe I'm wrong. No, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, BS. Um, uh, Oh, VS might not be our example. It might be yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. VS is ours. VS is our example. Right? Okay. Maybe right. VS so is somebody else. Because we... <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. okay, I'll make a note of it. And uh, this silver's copy. We are going to cover okay. it. Yeah, we'll just make a note of it there. VS is someone else's service. Yeah. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Some other parts. We are going to know VAS. Yeah. So I'm sorry about that. So, <laughs> so assignment of personal area to company code. Yeah. Company code and then VA VS IA. Right. So here we have we need to assign the company code yeah and the country code there are two fields that we need to assign here the first one is the company code that is 3000 yeah and the country grouping for us system US okay. system if you click on the drop down here if you want to click on the drop down you can hit on f4 yeah f4 or you can also click on the drop down that you are seeing here any one of these so here you'll okay. be able to see all the country groupings, all the country groupings. So because this is a okay. German related software, they have given a country group called as 01 for their okay. country, okay. Yeah, okay. Followed, followed by a few of the, you know, uh, European countries. Okay. <laughs> and then came US, then came okay. US. Okay, so SAP is a German software actually. SAP is a German software. So you can use, you have to assign 10. And then if you navigate a little up, you'll also see Atlanta, so 2000, and then 10. Yeah? Save it, control this. Yeah, control this, and then navigate. So with respect to this is this is the end-to-end -end configuration of the enterprise structure. This is the end-to-end -end configuration of enterprise structure. So as a part of it, first of all, we have configured the personal areas. Yeah. First of all, we have configured the personal areas. Then we have assigned the personal sub areas to the personal areas. Yeah. Personal sub areas. And after this, we have assigned the company. We have assigned the company. Code. So we have set up the entire link between the personal areas, personal sub areas, and then the company code. And then the company code. Now, now, there are certain rules that we need to follow yeah, while creating the enterprise structure with respect to the customer's business process, which we need to remove. There are certain rules. Now, let us say that there is only one location in which the customer has operations. Okay. Let's say there is no Dallas. Let's say there is no Dallas. Okay. okay. Then what happens is the company code is of course mandatory. Yeah, mandatory. Then we are going to set up only one personal area. Yeah, one personal area. 
and then we can assign the personal sub areas under the personal area. This structure is also valid. This structure is also valid. Only one company code, yeah. Only one personal area and okay. multiple personal sub areas under one personal area is also valid. Yeah, but it is mandatory to have at least one personal sub area under each personal area. It is mandatory to have at least one personal sub area under each personal area okay. as a post condition. One company code, one personal area, one personal sub area is valid structure. Valid structure. One company code, yeah, multiple personal areas, yeah. And okay. under each personal area, multiple personal sub areas is also valid. Just like this. One company code, two personal areas, and two personal sub areas under each personal area. This is also valid. This is okay. also valid. valid. Then multiple company codes. Company code one. <clears throat> company code two. Let's say Company code one, yeah. Company okay. code two. Company code two. This is also valid. Under company code one, we have one person area and two person sub areas. This is also valid. Under company code two, we have one person area, one per, two person sub areas. This is also valid. This is also valid. And under multiple company codes. Having multiple sets of personal areas and sub areas this is also valid. This is also valid. It all depends on how many company codes the FICO consultants have created. That will be the basis for us to create the personal areas and sub areas. For a particular customer, if there are 10 company codes that have been set up, then under each company code, we have to create set of personal areas and sub areas. Set of personal areas and sub areas. Right. Okay. Let's let's consider let's consider you know, a client based out of India. Based out of India. Let's consider that they have operations in Telangana. They have operations in AP. Yeah. They have operations in Tamil Nadu. They have operations in Kerala, yeah, Karnataka. They have operations in Kerala. Let's assume. Let's assume. Okay. Yeah. So the FICO consultants, as per their sales or their, their finance business process, they might create company codes for each state based on the taxation, sales tax, and all this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Three company code four company code five. Then as a HR, so what they do is they simply say that okay, these are the company codes that we have created. That is what the information we see. So after seeing this, what we need to do is we need to set up enterprise structure under each company code. We need to set up the enterprise structure. That is set of personal areas and sub areas under each company, each company code. code. So under the company code <coughs> C1, C1, let us say they have operations in Hyderabad. Yeah, Hyderabad, and then they have operations in Karimnagar, let's say, or Varangal. Let's say Varangal. Okay. Yeah, Varangal. And under AP, let's say they have operations in three different cities or four different cities in the in Tamil Nadu, let's say they have operations in, in 10, 10 cities yeah okay. so like that you know under each state they have operations in different cities so each of the city has to be defined as a personal area a personal area and the departments that are present have to be defined, defined as personal sub areas. Personal sub areas. So if they have operations in two different two cities, two personal areas, 
under each city we have to set up the under each personal area we have to set up the personal sub areas this is also a valid enterprise structure this is also a valid enterprise structure the only condition is based on the number of company codes we have to create the uh, sets of personal areas and sub areas if one company code then under that one company code only we have to create multiple we have to accommodate all the personal areas and sub areas if there are two company codes we have to accommodate the required personal areas and sub areas under the two company codes right okay. so configuration okay. of the company codes is the job of the fico consultants now let's say there's a company which has operations in two countries us and canada in this case it is mandatory to have at least two company codes because the countries are different if the countries themselves are different there are a whole lot of varieties there are a whole lot of variations right from the currency right from the currency to the tax systems to the benefits to the statutory leaves or holidays salary components everything is going to vary so even the finance business process is also going to be vary there will be a lot of variations right from the sales tax export import tax varieties of taxes right so it's mandatory to have at least two company codes if the operations are there in two different companies okay at least right. of course mul multiple company codes under each country is also possible so it is a lookout of the fico consultants to create the company codes but once we receive the company codes we need to identify and we need to design the sets of possible sub areas that we have to configure under each company code right and one mandatory thing is we have there should be at least one personal sub area under each personal area this is mandatory this is mandatory irrespective of the number of company codes and personal areas you have configuring at least one personal sub area under each personal area is mandatory all right this mandatory so this is how we configure the enterprise structure enterprise structure so with respect to the personal administration we are done with enterprise structure okay, i'll stop here for now i'll stop here for now and okay. in tomorrow's session we'll discuss about personal structure yeah? so, okay. so please go ahead and practice yeah practice a lot and uh, it's practice that is going to take you a long way that's a help and then possibly i can give you a lot of you know tips and tricks as to how to get a job after the course okay that, that is the next okay step. but sure okay for that you have to be deserving first of all right before you decide a job so you should be deserving so right be deserving then you will definitely get a job that's not a problem there are, there are lots and lots and lots of opportunities but you should be able to relocate to any location so okay, okay so you, i'm okay i'm okay with that yeah there are a lot of opportunities across there are a lot of ways to get jobs that's a different story but okay. first of all you have to practice and you should be deserving then you can desire okay all right please okay. do practice you know you have enough to practice now sure, sure. Sure, sure. all right talk to you tomorrow possibly